Hello everyone, welcome once again to Fraud on the Telly. Today we are once again discussing all things Critical Role in Matt Mercer. That's right, today's video, we're going to be talking about the amazing long-term storytelling that Matt Mercer has been able to implement in Critical Role, specifically recently in Campaign 3, with some amazing reveals, and just to discuss the importance of long-term storytelling, why it's so hard, and why it's just so good across, like, all forms of media. As always, if you enjoyed the video, learn something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out some of our other Critical Role content, as well, make sure you click that tiny bell so my videos go directly into your feed. Let's just get started, shall we? Just to know, we'll be doing some minor spoilers for Critical Role uh, Campaign 3, as well as some minor spoilers uh, for Campaign 1 and 2. So just keep that in mind, because we're talking about long-term storytelling, aka storytelling, over a long period of time. So how can we uh, discuss this in Critical Role without some spoilers? So just be warned. So in the last episode of Critical Role of 2022, Matt dropped some major more bombshells as well though he introduced a character a character that he had been teasing since basically the inception of critical role it's that character was one planewalker rin a character that has like we've said been teased or referenced or been some kind of uh tied into the story of critical role throughout all three campaigns you see this character made their first appearance very briefly all the way back in the original talgory campaign setting guide this reference was super small as well we recently learned if i remember correctly that planewalker rin was the one who put the contract the hit out on the rakshasha hotis in the slayers take vasselheim arc all the way back in campaign one. As well, once again, Planewalker Rin makes a kind of appearance in campaign two when Bell's Hells accidentally stumble into her uh, sanctum, into one of her abodes in the Plane of Fire. You'll remember this is when Luke, Veth's uh, son, dies. Finally, though, we have the true introduction of Planewalker Rin, like we said in the last episode of campaign three of uh, 2022, where Bell's Hells follow a, a certain professor who they're trying to speak to through a teleportation circle, taking them to Planewalker Rin's sanctum in the uh, Plane of Fire. This character is just one example of long-term storytelling at its finest, but it's really what this character means and kind of their role in the greater story of Critical Role Campaign 3 and just Critical Role in general. Long-term storytelling for me is one of the most satisfying uh, types of storytelling there is. For the longest time, it was really only possible to do it in books, as books give you the time to tell these long-term stories. Obviously, it can be done in D&D &D and roleplay settings as well. But here's the thing about long-term storytelling. It takes time. The word long-term is literal. It takes a long amount of time to let these seeds sit, grow, until they develop into whatever story that you have planned. Nice. Matt is one of the masters of this. It's so fun trying to figure out exactly how he's doing this. And like we said, uh, Dungeons & Dragons is a very, very capable medium of telling long-term storytelling. But the problem is, one, most campaigns don't last long enough to tell long-term stories. And two, most people, unlike uh, the Critical Role team, play multiple campaigns where they can tell stories that take place across these three campaigns for an absolutely epic tale. One of my other strange side uh, kind of hobby interests is uh, wrestling, specifically Japanese wrestling. I used to live in Japan for a while and that's where I kind of became a fan of Japanese professional wrestling because the quality of stories that they tell and the types of long-term storytelling that they're able to tell is just absolutely amazing look no farther than the story of the golden lovers if you're a wrestling fan you'll know what i'm talking about but if you're interested i'll link a video in the comments uh down below that really kind of goes into detail on the amazingness of this story and how it only could work because it's a long-term story detailing um specific events of two specific wrestlers and their relationship with one another that necessarily takes five, seven, ten years to tell. You see, Campaign 3 as a story has been kind of been building, like we said, since Critical Role's inceptions, at the very least since Campaign 1 was streamed on Geek and Sundry. Obviously, like we said in this last episode of 2022, we got some major reveals about the nature of Ruidus, uh, these two missing gods who had apparently been eaten by some unknown being, some being from across the stars known as Pradathos, a being so scary that the gods work together with the Primorials to seal it away in Ruidus. Ruidus has been mentioned as far back 
as campaign one for the longest time it was just the strange red moon in the sky it was just assumed that it was just normal that exandria had two moons a la star wars Esque scenario. It isn't until now Matt has finally allowed the seeds that he has planted to sprout and grow, and we're getting this payoff right now. This isn't just with certain characters either. If you're a Critical Role fan, you'll remember that uh, Exandria Unlimited Calamity, a mini series over the Calamity, took place early on in. 2022 now this was done and placed here in the middle of campaign three or at the beginning of campaign three for a very important reason this in itself is foreshadowing this in itself is long-term storytelling setting the seeds because in exu calamity we received uh, important information about uh, an event in critical role history known as the calamity that happened way in the past but informs much of the goings on and the events that take place within the modern uh, campaigns of critical role and just inform uh, how the world of Alexandria is currently shaped much of this was all because of the calamity an event that is shrouded in mystery even still so it can be safely assumed that every nugget of information that we learn about this very mysterious time is important in some sense it will make an appearance again we've already seen this kind of in full detail with the ascending of the raven queen the matron of ravens and the nature of her ascension into godhood and how it relates with uh, i guess these two dead gods as well as the shifting of the pantheon the nature between betrayer gods prime deities primordials and just mortals not to even mention the most obvious one the apogee solstice which was kind of the core plot of exu calamity which was done in order to educate us on the apogee solstice once again appearing in campaign three all of this over the last multiple years has been done very explicitly it's really interesting uh, i've seen several reddit posts going back and detailing a lot of the kind of nuggets and tidbits of information especially about ruidus the calamity anything that's kind of been hinted at that is suddenly reappearing now in campaign three in addition there's many other elements of campaign three that are making appearances from campaign two or works that have been set in motion that begun in campaign two this isn't the first time matt's done something like this we can only think back to um garmili the strange archfey from campaign one and then its role in campaign two with jester as well as p potentially maybe its role in campaign three and the role of the feywild in campaign three with all of the crazy stuff that's going on with ruidus for me i think that this long-term storytelling we're seeing in critical role right now come to fruition um it's just something super special and amazing it's pretty unique for most average people to be able to tell long-term storytelling like this especially well in their own dungeons and dragons campaigns because most of the time for average mortals and people like us games just don't go that long it's been really rare for me that i've had a game go a year and a half close to two years usually that's the cap on certain games and if you play once a week twice a week it can be hard to tell super long-term stories um like that as well you kind of need some input from your dm uh, to be able to tell these stories. Personally, I find it uh, really mind-boggling at times at just the scale of the long-term storytelling that Matt Mercer is trying to put on here. I can only imagine almost in like a George R. R. Martin state staying up late at night, trying to tie up a lot of loose plot holes, trying to make sure there are no plot holes, tie up loose ends, and these long-term stories that he's been kind of laying the foundation for since the very beginning and it's absolutely amazing seeing this payoff now especially considering that he was setting some of these seeds all the way back early in campaign one before the critical role cast realized just how absolutely crazy of a movement that their show was going to cause there's no way that anyone would have known that critical role would have blown up to be as big as it has and would can still continue to be going on um some like seven eight plus years later since its original uh viewing on geek and sundry he's been doing this forever on many different scales but because we are now in campaign three of critical role as well we've had several other mini campaigns mini story arcs in different time periods throughout the critical role universe we're starting to get the gaps filled in and we're starting to really see just the sheer epicness of matt mercer's long-term storytelling I cannot wait to see what happens in the future of Critical Role in Campaign 3. It's already apparent from the last episode of Critical Role that we saw uh, at the end of 2022 that in 2023 we're going to be getting some probably mind-melting, mind-breaking knowledge about the lore of Exandria and the world of Critical Role. Some knowledge that probably will change everything we know 
about uh, Exandria, the Calamity, the gods, all of this. Personally, I can't wait, and it's been a privilege to get to witness a lot of um, this amazing storytelling and just amazing long-term thought and planning from Matt Mercer, especially when you consider that D&D as a medium is something that you can only plan so much for. Obviously, you have a group of players who you cannot predict. <laughs> you can't predict everything they're going to do. As well, you use these things called dice. And if you guys didn't know, dice can be random at times. So the fact that they're able to tell a thorough long-term story, considering all of the randomness that's going on with the dice, as well as the randomness that goes on with player choices and the way they want uh, to take the story, it's just absolutely epic, man. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen in 2023 with Critical Role. As always, if you enjoyed the video, learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out some of our other Critical Role content, like our other Campaign 3 theories. Most recently, a couple weeks ago, we put out a, a theory about uh, Predathos, this crazy entity that we received a bunch of information from uh, a couple weeks ago on Critical Role. So make sure you go check that one out. And as always, guys, I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Until next time, peace, love. All the stars aligned and you were so damn fine, yeah. It was young love, young hearts were so pure. We trust love is so hard to endure. A few years passed, made the move out west. It became harder to maintain it, put us to the test. I hope you know I did my best. Have you